our country is one of the highest producers of leather and finished leather products in Africa. And as we've heard, a study carried out by the Nigerian Economic Summit projected that the Nigerian leather industry has the potential to generate over a billion US dollars by 2025. The leather value chain is extensive. As you know, it, it includes animal husbandry, tanneries, finished leather products, and leather products market. The leather and leather products industry itself, we are told, currently employs over 700,000 workers, with about 500,000 workers in the finished leather goods sector. There are about 11 leather exporting companies. And they have been very active in the upstream end of the leather value chain. Together, these companies today generate about 8,000 jobs. And the export of leather has grown steadily, reaching a peak of about $117 million in 2018. But it fell in 2020, largely due to the pandemic. To date, however, exports are somewhere in the order of about $272 million US dollars. Nigeria's semi-finished and finished leather have their highest patronage in several countries of the world, Italy, Spain, India, South Asia, and China. And the market in shoes, belts, bags, and folders are all over West Africa and uh, many parts of Africa. Some of the evidence that we gather say that the famous Abba shoe cluster in Abia State informally exports almost a million pairs of shoes every week to destinations in Africa. The industry is huge and its potential can only be imagined. So there is no question that properly organized, the leather and leather products industry could become one of the major items in Nigeria's export basket. There's clearly an enormous potential for even greater job opportunities and much higher export process. As we've seen, the Nigerian Economic Summit Group projection shows that the Nigerian leather industry has the potential to increase earnings by as much as 70% in the next couple of years. So this explains why this much of the National Leather and Leather Products Policy Implementation Plan is such an exciting development. We now have a real opportunity to address the specific challenges and shortcomings of the leather sector with pragmatic strategies to permanently resolve some of these issues for optimal productivity. In particular, there is now a clear line of sight to our emergence as a major hub, if only in Africa, for the manufacture of leather goods, with the refocusing of the leather sector to value addition from the previous focus on export of semi-processed leather. And a major part of that effort is in improving access to credit for leather product manufacturers. So this plan provides an opportunity to develop a credit guarantee scheme along the lines of the very successful agricultural credit guarantee scheme. In addition, a more intentional infrastructure development plan is now possible. Our special economic zones project already highlights product manufacturing as a major focus of, of the plans for the, for the economic zone. So all that is required now is synergy and collaboration with NEPSA, and we will indeed be able to find the kind of infrastructure that can support this industry. By optimizing the value chain, the sector will provide employment, improve our foreign exchange earnings, and boost growth. Consequently, it is evident that just in terms of what we have set for ourselves to do through the policy and the implementation plan, the stakes are very high. The plan covers eight thematic areas, as the Honorable Minister of State has told us, including intellectual property rights, governance, e-leather, environmental and social best practices, marketing, funding, critical infrastructure, and research and development. The plan is as all encompassing as it is detailed. And uh, relevant NDAs, NGOs, and the organized private sector are already assigned specific responsibilities 
for the various objectives and strategies of the plan. A central feature of, that, of the plan is the development of technical capacity in leather works and technology. So the Nigerian Institute of Leather, Science and Technology, the arrowhead of the plan, has established nine extension centers across six geographical zones of Nigeria. These extension centers are already operational with well-built workshops, laboratories and exhibition showrooms to train and develop young entrepreneurs in Nigeria, as well as provide innovative research and development in processing. So we now have the capacity to train in processing and conversion of high tech schemes and polymers into leather and leather products of global standard for export. The Institute has been providing courses of instruction towards the HND, OND, Diplomas, pre diplomas, advanced certificate and certificate programs. It also actively, it also actively engaged in research and development activities on leather and leather product technologies and related fields. The institute is collaborating with the ministry with the military for research, uh, development, design, and production of military footwear and military products made of leather. So the very idea of an implementation plan is, in my view, refreshingly innovative. It addresses the malignant problem of great plans for poor delivery that appears to bedevil many policies of government. The plan sets out deliverables, it tells us who the implementers are, and it sets timelines. The next steps are clear, and the stage is set for establishing the leather and leather products industry in Nigeria on a sure-footed and well-thought-out growth trajectory. The Honourable Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Gunaya Bonu, and the Honourable Minister of State, and their team, the Honourable Minister himself, and illustrious scientist and a man of ideas, they all deserve our commendation for this plan. <laughs> to, to our list uh, of those that must be we must add the collaborators, their collaborators, including the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, the Ministry of Education, Environment, and the Raw Materials Research and Development Council. And of course, the Nigerian Institute of Leather, Science and Technology, who are the secretariat for the project. We also thank the European Union and the German Society for International Cooperation, GIC, who through the Nigerian Competitiveness Project, NICO, are partnering in the implementation of this policy. Very well done, everyone. We look forward to the great results of this well thought out plan, and we expect to see those results in very, very short order. It is now my very special pleasure, privilege, to formally launch the National Leather and Leather Products Policy Implementation Plan. And I will go down and invite uh, all of those on the high table to join me as we officially update the plan. God bless the federal government.